Welcome everybody to tonight's Bible study. We are so glad you decided to join us here in the second half of John chapter 10. Uh, we are going through the sheep and shepherd discourse. Last week was the shepherd. This week we'll be looking at the sheep and how the sheep respond to the shepherd. True sheep versus um, false sheep. Um, it's a charged section. We're excited to be a part of it. Mandy Lay, why don't you start us off? John chapter 10, starting in verse 22. It was now winter and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. Amen. Amen. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Amen. Verse 29. 29. And my Father has given them to me. And he is more away from the father, sorry, and he is more powerful than anyone else. Nobody can take them away from the father. I and the father are one. Amen. 31. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the father. For which of these do you stone me? We we are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. 34, Jesus replied, it is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are gods, and you know that the scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called gods, why do you call it blasphemy when I say I am the son of God? After all, Father set me apart and sent me into the world. Okay. Uh -huh. If I do not do the work of my father, do not believe me. But I do though, though you do not believe me. Believe the works that you may know and believe me, believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they sought again to say, seize him, but he escaped out of their hands. Verse 40. He went away again beyond the Jordan River to the place where John was baptizing at first. And there he stayed. Then a great many came to him. And said, John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke about this man were true, and many believed in him. Amen. All right, everybody, you have your sections. I'll give you a few moments to go over your section and figure it out, uh, what you want to share with us. Once you've figured it out, just throw a hand up and we will begin as soon as everybody's ready. Um, praying for you guys. I think Mandy Lay, go ahead and start us off. Okay, um, I'm going to start with that question. How long are you going to keep us in suspense? Because I feel like I ask God that question sometimes. <laughs> um, I feel like there are moments in my life I'm like, uh, it's either God, are you there? Or God, are you real? You know, um, and when they're asking this question, it's to me, they're not asking as if they're seeking um, for him, you know, and, and I think about why, why didn't Jesus just tell them? I mean, he told the woman at the, the well in John four, that was the Messiah, you know, so why didn't they, why didn't he just tell them that, yes, I am the Messiah. And I think it just had to do with, because he knew that they weren't, seeking him truly 
um, that they were mainly seeking for that political messiah, you know, mm. to overthrow Rome. And so if he had stated to them he is a messiah, it probably would have gone straight over their head <laughs> and they wouldn't have understood what he was meaning. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I mean, he already said, I have already told you and you still don't believe me. How much more do I have to prove to you? And there was just so much evidence that G what Jesus was doing was in his father's name and he was doing his father's well, but yet they still didn't believe and they didn't believe because they plainly were not his sheep. So. Amen. Mm. Good job, sis. Uh, Monty, share, us a, share with us what you got. Okay, um, Mandy, I'm going to stand for you and say you're not like them. Uh, because do you know anyone like that who who blames you for why they don't believe in something? That They blame Jesus for their unbelief. You know, and, and I'm just doing this for a little context. Jesus told them, I, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name bears witness about me. And Jesus never outright declares his messiahship to the multitudes or religious leaders because, and you said that, Mandy, the mindset of every Jew by this time is that the messiah is supposed to be a conqueror, mm -hmm. a warrior that would fight and set them free. And by not right by not outright claiming that he is the Christ, the Messiah, this makes it impossible for to law lawfully seize him for God's appointed time. How has he told them? By the name Son of Man. The Son of Man has authority over judgment. The Son of Man is one of whom Moses wrote. The Son of Man is living bread. The Son of Man is Abraham, rejoice mm -hmm. to see. Um, and the Son of Man is works, you know, works performed like, like these. And verse 26, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. Mm -hmm. So remember in our, our last discussion, the definition of sheep, they know the one that, that cares for them, or at least the one that they perceive cares for them. And they follow him. Who are the ones that are following him right now? Well, the, they're the disciples and the Samaritans, starting from the woman at the well and her testimony to them. See, they're all following him now. And most recently, the blind beggar. And why did Jesus speak in parables? To make things clearer? No. Just the opposite, to make it hard for thieves, robbers, leaven infected people to understand. I give them eternal life, verse 28, and they will never perish, and no one will will snatch them out of my hand. And all I can remember, Mandy, is how you said, how you pointed out in our last study, how wonderful that is. That not only are we, we held tight by Jesus, but God also holds us tight. So the and the only thing necessary for that is to believe and accept. That's my Amen. great Amen. job, Monty. Thank you so much. Amen. That was beautiful. Uh Anthony Herbie, I think you're next. Yeah. Um <clears throat> so my reflection on, on this um my son, my verses was that um, you know, Christ will always look after his sheep. Right, and Jesus made a wonderful promise to everyone, all of us, that, um, and there was a promise that he made, is that he will always look after each and every one of us that will follow him, believe in him, and follow him. And God, you know, sometimes, you know, we think that God needs our help to defend him, but he just, he did, he never needed our help to defend him, because sometimes, you know, I feel like, oh, you know, when I pray, I'm always praying that, you know, um, not to help him, but um, like, well, you know, not to sound like, you know, I'm telling God what to do, but all we need to do is just trust in his promises. 
and uh, because his word is always truth. And just let God be God. And uh, he will bless you. He will bless all of us. Amen. 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 Um, when I first read this chapter, I cried because I just imagine what Jesus must have felt. He's facing these people, these Jews, and they got rocks in their hand and they want to stone him uh, to death. Can you just imagine, Monty, um, Pastor Tim, if our children said, yes, Monty De La Cruz is my dad. Yes, Pastor Tim is my dad. And they don't lie. And they're going to stone your child because they say you lie. Mm. Can you just imagine that pain? And the, I just, I cried here. But they're going to, they want to stone him. And he said, you know, I've shown you so many miracles. Which one are you going to hold me? Um, are you going to stone me for? They said, none of them. We're simply going to stone you because you said you claim to be God. Okay, that's it. And, and in Leviticus, I went back to Levi Leviticus 24, 13, where the Lord told Moses what to do to take the blasphemer outside the camp and stone him. And so now here the Jews, they, they're going to, they took that law and then they're going to stone Jesus. So I just wept when I read this this chapter. Mm. Amen. Amen. Powerful, Auntie. Yeah, powerful. Um, Auntie Sue. So I was kind of confused about it says it is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are gods. Mm -hmm. So would would God say that people are gods? So I don't know. Right, right. What, is referring to yeah well we can but, get into that in a bit but uh okay. what else do you got there Andy? but then they're questioning him for saying that he is the son of god and they're still not believing him. so that's what i got okay the fact that they're not um believing him excellent okay well, well come back to yours um and we'll go over the god part but i do want to get to auntie joyce I have this very, very uncomfortable feeling, you know, when someone calls you a liar or someone does things to you that, um, and yet they did so much things to him or attempted to do to him, but yet he still showed his love. I believe that. I, I, I believed he, he was showing his love. Whatever words came out of his mouth, or Jesus' mouth, it was love. And that's what I got. Great job, Auntie. Great job. Um, so I guess uh, Auntie Helene is not joining us. And so okay. I will be, um, be taking her part, which is I'm happy to do. Uh, I have uh, 40 to 31. Uh, so after Jesus Christ to sell this stuff, um, and, and you know, this is really almost a last ditch effort pleading with them to you know, wake up. Um, you know, saying, you know, and, and letting them know that, listen, if you just follow me, if you believe me, you can be my sheep. But they don't want to be sheep. They want to be rulers. And so after he said these things, they pick up stones to stone him and seize him again. And I love the fact that Christ was, and this is something I have to learn, never confrontational when it wasn't time to be confrontational. You know, he had great level of discernment. He was forward with them. He was um, you know, earnest with them. He was blunt with them in many times. But when it came time to fight, he didn't mind just kind of going away and removing himself from a situation that was too volatile. This is what he does here. He removes himself in verse 40 and says, goes back again to the place beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. Um, and then great many people came to him. This is the place where his ministry really first started. It started in the voice of John, one crying in the desert, um, make way the paths for the one who is to come the messiah and think about this and, and he says it here too um how many miracles did john perform when he's out there in the desert crying out none none right yeah. when christ comes he performs miracle upon miracle upon miracle uh and the miracles he said were to prove what he said was true not yeah. to show how powerful he was but just you know i 
just, I realize it's hard for you to, you know, just take from scripture sort of what I'm saying, but I'm giving these miracles too. However, his true followers, his sheep, the apostles, they started out, if you remember the beginning of the story, as followers of John. They were listening to John and they believed the words of John, even though John said no miracles uh, or did no miracles. They believed what he said. And when John said, behold the Lamb of God, follow him. Two of his, John's apostles got up and followed Jesus. And they started following him. And then they brought uh, their brothers, Simon mean, Peter, and then James and John. And the whole group now starts following Jesus off of not his miracles, but the words that were stated. And I believe that, that John the Apostle, as he's writing this gospel, is writing to the people who are now later in time, not based on Jesus' miracles, the early apostles, but instead based on the words that John had spoken and in the words they hear Jesus speak. The majority of the people who came to follow Jesus earnestly followed him on his words. And so John is writing this to a people years later, crying out, where are the miracles that Jesus did? He did all these mm -hmm. miracles. And the apostles did many miracles, but there's a time when for miracles and there's a time for belief, right? And so um, the John, John, John is calling to the people who are reading this, you know, there is enough evidence there for you to believe. Will you believe? This is why he mentions that Jesus goes back to the place where John was baptizing before, John the Baptist, to a place where belief was enough. And, um, and, and I think that, that, that this is a, a call to us um, when we get into those, those moments when we're crying out in our lives, looking for answers, looking for Jesus. You know, I need my bills to be paid now. I need this, this sickness to be healed now. I need this marriage to be fixed now. Why aren't you doing it? I need a miracle in my life now. Uh, and Jesus is like, I'm working with you. But now is not the time for miracles. Now is the time for belief. Go back to the time in your life when you believed by what I said, when you knew I was real, go back and hold on to that. And um, yeah, I believe that this is what, that's what this section is doing. Uh, they ended by saying John performed no sign, but all the things John spoke about this man were true. And many believed in him there. Where's there? Not just the physical place, but the emotional, mental, spiritual place. Believed in him in that place where no miracles are happening. Mm -hmm. But yet, real words are being spoken that are changing lives. Uh, I hope that as you come to the sermons and the Bible studies and you hear people speaking about the um, truth and belief of God, that there is a belief that happens there, in that place. And you don't yeah. need God to perform a great miracle in your life for you to believe in Him. Anyway, again, that's all I got from this section. Thank you guys for letting me share. And let's open it up now to everybody who would like to share what they got from the entire section. Monty had his hand up a split second before Mandy, so we'll let him go first, and then Mandy. I wanted to um, to reply to Auntie Sue, uh, because this is quite an exchange going on between Jesus and the Jews that wanted to stone him. And um, I struggled with this a lot uh, when I was going through this study. Uh, but the most important thing is in verse 35 where he says, and the scripture cannot be broken. And, you know, Jesus referred to scripture 64 times in, in the New Testament, and he called it the authoritative and inerrant word, word of the living God. The Savior we believe in has a, a very high view of scripture, and if you don't, you have some issues to deal with. You know, Jesus considered the scriptures as God's revelation to humanity, and he used it to support his teachings and engage discussions with religious leaders and anyone, anyone trying to throw him off. And Auntie Sue, because, because Jesus is so good at referring to scripture, I want to understand and be able to explain to others. If I can explain, if I can put my, my money where my mouth is, um, about explaining something. I want to understand what he meant and and said, particularly here. So verse verse 34 and 35. Actually, verse 34, where he where he talks about the let me um get that. So Jesus answered him, 
answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word came and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the son of God. So he said, look, fellas, I said, I and the father am one. Doesn't your own scripture say, doesn't it mention that there are other sons of God that are more than mortal? See, that's his point. He doesn't say, I'm just like you. You get to call yourselves sons of God too. He's saying, doesn't Psalm 82 tell you that there are other sons of God who are more than men? Re remember Elohim? Yes, that generally means God, but but the people that are referred to in Exodus 22 are judges. No, not from the book of Judges, but it turns out Elohim sometimes refers to people like these. So that's point number one. And that said, Jesus is saying, I can take this title and claim that I am more than a man, but just so that we're clear what my status is in the council, verse 37 and 38, the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Are we clear now? I am Lord of the council. Remember earlier, Jesus writing in the sand and the finger, writing out the Ten Commandments? Jesus is the one who renders out the judgment spoken about in Psalm 82, both now in his death and resurrection, and when the end shall come in the day of the Lord. Is that clear? Is that clear what, what Jesus is saying in that exchange? Um, Auntie Sue, does that, does that help? Before you answer that, Antistu, let uh, let's let a few more people jump on this oh, yeah. um, okay. discussion and and kind of understand it. Uh, if I could piggyback off of Monty, let's go to so Jesus here when he says, um, "Hasn't it said in your law that you are gods?" It's referring back to Psalms eighty six, like Monty said. So why don't we turn our Bibles and 82. go back to Psalms? I'm sorry, Psalms eighty two, verse six. Verse six, yeah. And read it. it said I said, uh, if everybody get there, tell me when you get there. All right. It says, I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High, but you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Therefore, rise up, O God, and judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. So while Monty is absolutely right that there are many different understandings and um, uh, uses for the term Elohim, some of it's judges, some of it's some you know, other things, in this statement that he's quoting, He's quoting um, uh, humans. This is he's referring to other humans. He's referring to people who are going to die because they're mere mortals, mm -hmm. uh, but they are yet called gods. How can they be called gods? And a lot of people have a problem. A lot of people get really uncomfortable. But here's the thing: How are we formed? By who? In the by image Jesus. of God. We were formed by God in the image of God. What did that mean to be formed in the image of God? Well, man, he formed us and then filled us with his presence and made us living mm -hmm. beings. We are sons of God, therefore, and the, the people said, how can you who call yourself um, a, 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 a you are, you, how can you call yourself now when, uh, a God when you are a mere, mere man, right? Well, Jesus is saying we are all sons of God, aren't we? Those who accept Jesus, who accept me, we're, we're God. We're sons of God. We're made in his image. Therefore, we can literally say, it says there in the scriptures, that we are all gods, Lord G, but gods in the sense of we are formed in his image. Okay, And if you can say that about yourselves, that the scripture says that about yourselves, like Monty said, then isn't it all right for me then to say it? Well, you're going to stone me for something I'm agreeing with scriptures about. That, yes, I am a son of God. Now, I'm a little bit more. I'm the Messiah. But... The thing that you want to stone me at, that you say you want to stone me about, was me calling myself the son of God. But the very scriptures say that we are all sons of God. So that's what I see going on here. Does anybody else see something else going on here? Mandy, you look like you want to clear it up for us. I do not. 
<laughs> but I do want to, <laughs> there, there was something that you had said in your thing about that now is not a time for miracles, but now a time for belief. And, and it made me think about their question in the beginning that they had asked him, you know, like, when are you going to finally, um, tell us, you know, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? And I think it's because they never was there in the belief moment in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, 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 it makes me think of, um, like when someone tells you they're going to do something and, and you see them doing opposite and they're like, next time I'll do better. Next time I'll do better. And you don't believe them until you actually see them mm -hmm. do that. And so I think with them, they only saw the miracles and the belief never came to mm. them, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and a lot of times I think we, we do that. Like we don't believe in God until maybe he answers a prayer of ours mm -hmm. or something. You know, but um, I like what you said. It's like now's not the time for miracles, but now is the time for us to build our belief yeah. in God. Because then you'll notice that once you believe in him, then all of a sudden, all these miracles are already around you. Exactly. I was going to, you stole right the words out of my mouth. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's now's not the time for miracles is means not that now's not the time to be seeking out your miracle right? It's time for belief because once you believe, you recognize that the miracles have been happening all around you. You know, yeah. you've already seen it. That's beautiful, sis. Thank you so much. Uh, I, the, the whole God's thing, you know, I want, don't want to jump on, but I know it's, it sounds confusing. Um, and I'm going to say something that may make it more confusing or may make it less confusing. I don't know. We'll leave it at that. And uh, I, I invite you, Auntie Sue, to go check out um, one of the commentaries, the SDA commentary, which we have here at the church. If you'd like to look deeper into it, if any of you would like to, I believe you can find the SDA commentary online and um, maybe help you get a better understanding of, of that text. But, um, you know, I'm a Nelson because my father was a Nelson and his father was a Nelson, his father was a Nelson, and so forth and so on. Um, Mandelay is not, is a born, right? You know, so, so if she were to go into a Rodriguez family party, and tell the people there, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Rodriguez. They would be like, you can't be a Rodriguez. How dare you call yourself a Rodriguez? You're born, you know? Now, would that make any sense? I'm sorry, those of you who don't know what Mandy's main name is Rodriguez. So <laughs> some of you are like, I, I don't know. Um, it, it wouldn't make any sense because she was born a Rodriguez. She is of the bloodline of the Rodriguez, but as she is here and, you know, seen, you know, after she you know, transition to another stage in her life, she's known as a born. Um, Jesus Christ was born of Mary, and they could not accept for themselves that he was the son of God. And Jesus Christ was trying to show them, we are all sons of God. You know, you have no problem saying, you know, we are sons of God. We're sons of Abraham, who's the son of, you know, Adam, who's the son of God. You have no problem seeing that. The big problem that you have is an understanding that I claim to be the Messiah. Um, and so you're trying to throw stones at me for claiming to be, you know, the son of God. Uh, but we all claim to be that. So what's the big deal? Why would you want to kill me for doing that? And so he mentions this text in Psalms where God basically tells them, you know, you are God's, you know, my children, um, you know, but, you know, not God says in you uh, the, the creator of the universe and you're going to change everything. No, you're, you're my children is basically what that's saying. Uh, does that help at all, Auntie Sue? She's being so Aunt silent. And I can't well, see she's on mute, Auntie Sue. Sorry, you're I was, on I was mute. wondering, maybe she was, when she was talking earlier and we couldn't hear her. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, were either of us helpful, Auntie Sue? Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> that was the quickest yes thank you so much <laughs> yes, yes yes please don't talk anymore about it. don't talk anymore about gods okay uh we have about four minutes before i we just want to say something go on so let's uh, to joss go ahead i just wanted to say that um a lot of this 
is confusing. And that's why I'm so thankful that we have these Bible studies because as Monty pointed out in, in 35, it says that the scriptures cannot be broken. Yes, the scriptures cannot be altered because it affirms the truth. It Amen. affirms the truth. And if I accept Jesus, then I have to accept, as you said, Pastor, you said the true word, then I too must accept the true word as the authority right. over my life. Absolutely. But I need to understand it. And so this Bible studies is, I'm just very grateful that we have this opportunity. Right. So thank you so much. Absolutely. I mean, I'm happy. We're, that's what we're here for. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, we, uh, iron sharpening yeah, thank iron. Thank you, everybody. Man sharpening another. Monty, go ahead. Yeah. Can I say just one? I'll try to be quick about it. But I love when the accuracy of the Bible can be demonstrated in one seemingly non-important verse. And that verse is the Feast of Dedication refers to the Feast of Hanukkah. And why do we care about that? Well, this, this event is also known as the Festival of Lights. And why do we care about that? And it's because mm -hmm. the Festival of Lights is a celebration of the rededication of the temple after its desecration by none other than Antiochus Epiphanes. Well, who is Antiochus Epiphanes? That is, uh, he was a Greek king who ruled over the Seleucid Empire in the second century. And during his reign, he attempted to suppress Judaism and impose Hellenistic culture on the Jewish people. Not only did he commit numerous atrocities to Jewish mothers and their children, but he also desecrated the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, banned certain religious practices, leading to a Jewish revolt known as the Maccabean Revolt. And this is all historically accurate. The Maccabees are a Jewish rebel group led by Judah Maccabee, who fought against Antiochus and his forces. And after a successful rebellion, they reclaimed the desecrated temple and rededicated it to, to the worship of God. And this event is commemorated during the festival of Hanukkah known as the Festival of Lights. So this verse says that Jesus was present in Jerusalem during the winter season, likely around the time of Hanukkah. And um, so the mention of the Feast of Dedication, it signifies the historical and cultural context during the time when Jesus was ministering. And so it helps situate the teachings and interactions within historical and religious context of the Jewish people. And you know how we ta always talk about how it's not appropriate to celebrate. Um, some people say uh, Christmas, the Christmas tree, because it's pagan. Well, um, and it doesn't specifically say if Jesus celebrated it. Uh, yeah. celebration that came from the law. It didn't come out of the scriptures, but thank it was a Jewish celebration, the Jews. Okay, th so thank you about that. But like, I thought that, isn't this peculiar though, that the Feast of Dedication refers to the the celebration of of the rededication of the altar after its desecration by Antiochus Epiphanes, which a lot of scholars have referred to as a type of Antichrist. And don't worry, I won't get deep into that, but it doesn't even, John doesn't even mention this, but he hints at it because the other synoptic gospels cover it. So if you guys hear about the abomination of desolation uh, from the book of Daniel. Yeah, we're, happened, we're, we're not all in um, agreement, uh, scholars, oh, that oh. Atias Atai, 50 was the abomination that causes desolation. There is um, um, this, so, so maybe we don't get into that in this Bible study. But yeah, that's, oh, okay. uh, that's a. Um, isn't he? Isn't he an, a type of? He's a type of antichrist. He's been seen as a type of antichrist, but the it doesn't fit with. Um, I don't know how to put this. The Daniel um, time narrative to place okay. him as the abomination that causes desolation spoken of in the book of Daniel. That that, that but a lot of um, scholars have tried to put him there. 
and sort of shoehorn him in. And so we have to be real careful just to take uh, some of the commentaries at their word on that. It's sort of like when the commentaries say, when um, John said he was on uh, in uh, vision on the Lord's Day, and mm -hmm. most commentaries say that Sunday. Well, nowhere in the Bible does it ever refer to the Lord's Day as Sunday. Uh, they're taking uh, a cultural historical um, presumption, presumption, and making it into a fact. So just you know, I, I, a lot of you are like, well, "What are you guys talking about? This is, I thought this was a Bible study." I'm sorry, guys. I mean, no, and, and thank you that this is Bible study uh, uh, for oh, yeah. co for covering that, um, Tim. That's why it. this is Bible study so that we can get straight those things that you know yeah. that yeah, we read no, thank in you. commentaries. All right. Thank you. I, uh, we have to end because we have a bunch of people wanting to join our, our board meeting. But let me just say this on the end, and thank you all for your your input. Um, as always, it's gone very deep, and you know I think we need to have like an after party party, you know, to discuss a lot of this stuff because it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one thing I just want to go over, Manny mentioned it briefly at the beginning, and this whole section is kind of encapsulated in this. The Jews come to him and say, tell us plainly who you are. Tell us who you are. And Jesus says, I already told you. Why didn't you believe me? Question is, has Jesus already told you who he is? Has God already revealed to himself who he is? And you're still asking him? Do we need mm -hmm. to go back? to God every single time we go through trials and tribulations and make him prove himself? Or is it, we, will we ever get to the place? Have we gotten to the place where we can say, you know what, Lord, I can't see you in this moment. I don't see your hand acting in this moment, but I believe that you are God. You've proven it to me already, and I'm going to trust you this time. Anyway, something to think about. I hope you do. I hope you um, have the complete and utter faith that God is God, even when you don't feel like it, and even when you don't see him. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, Mandy, close us a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for um, that we have your word to um, read, to study, but we also get this time to um, hear your voice and be your sheep and follow you and believe in you. Um, be with everyone here. May we have a blessed week. May we see each other on Sabbath. If not, may we see each other next week on Bible study again. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Have a wonderful time. We'll see you next Thank time. Thank you. See you in John 11.